Quick 2020. I'll be your host for this run. And I believe we are now ready for Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater being run by Raichu MGS. Let's hear it for him. Hello, everybody. I am Raichu MGS. I have, uh, behind me, I have a tea tree, Lieutenant Humphrey, Catlink, and Fizz, who's the arcade master. So I'm going to be running an MGS tree on new game, European Extreme, because why wouldn't you? I mean, honestly. Um, you either go hard or, you know, you just got to go all in. It's a lot of things. Hard the Europeans do a lot go. of things better than us. Let's so we're gonna, <laughs> be real. We're going to pick a new game, like I said. This is kind of lies, but it's not because I've never been to GDQ before, so I'm technically playing for the first time. And uh, we'll start time now. So first time you've ever played the game. First time in my whole life. <laughs> No spoilers, it's a blind run. After yeah. the end of World War II, While I wait for this on Skip Book of I'll just two. say East big shout out and hello to Mrs. Raichu at home in Ireland watching and War. all of the MGSR guys. Hopefully uh, everything goes really, really well. But it will, because... We're getting a world record. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I am. <laughs> I mean, we're at world record pace right now. Oh, yeah. It's I mean, everyone pace. starts off on world record pace. That's what happens in between. <laughs> so it's... First thing I'm going to do is change the camera because MGS3 is like really heavy on movement and requiring or needing to uh, like control the camera along with Snake is just, I'm not down for that. So we'll use the fixed cam that was included in the original version um, and we'll go and grab our backpack. We can't leave without that backpack or we get yelled at by our, our commanding officer. Where are we going to put everything if we don't have that backpack? Snake carries around a lot of things in that backpack. I know. I wish I had a backpack like that. Uh, me too. So just, it is a Metal Gear game, and if you're in any way familiar with Metal Gear Solid, it's like huge cutscenes, lots of codecs, lots of cuts, you know. Do you like talking? You'll get lots of talking. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is explained to like a micro detail. Yep. Kojima for you. So we're out in the jungle, we're, we're just chilling through the jungle, it's no big deal. Not really sure what we're doing here because I didn't like I didn't listen to what Major Zero said, so I'll figure <laughs> it out. Yeah, that's um, okay. It wouldn't be a real blind run if you paid attention to the instructions exactly, of the yeah. story. Yeah. That's... So of course we're in Florida, and that's why there's that's why there's alligators. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rolling around is uh, because this game is like too realistic for its time. Um, just like in real life, when you run up a slope. Snake starts to like slow down, he stutter steps and whatnot, so we roll up those hills. Just like real life. Just yeah. like real life. I do that in my personal life, I don't know about you, but... No, oh, all the time. Whenever I leave the house. Though. It's the only way I get anywhere. Yeah. Miss. Oh my. Cool. Right, so there we quick go. headshot the third time. <laughs> uh, those other two were on purpose, it was an orange demon. Blind yeah. place here, remember. Yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> track this guy and roll into him. And we're gonna... So Snake has a really, really bad, or really good, I guess, huh? uh, hitbox on his roll. Yeah. I can roll at somebody uh, in the Dali and the Vodno, and I'll hit them in Grozny Grad, so it's pretty nice. Yeah, sometimes you'll be 10 feet away from them, you still hit them somehow. You know, it works. Snake just has a gentleman's agreement going with everyone. Yeah. They play along. So we'll show off the quick headshot again with these guys. Um, the idea behind it is, when a guard is on the same level as I am, uh, going into first person and standing on Snake's tippy toes, I guess, he's just hits their head, because MGS3. This guy is, he's not very smart. So when we've scared a guard, they're like, vision goes, watch straight ahead of them, and they go deaf. They're really good guards. Oh, they can't see their left or right. The right. What's in front of them is what they see. <laughs> So I'm gonna show off the quick catch shot again. It's like a staple for the run. If you've been keeping count, that's five now. I'm gonna roll up the hills again. Yeah, our movement in this area is all entirely designed to uh, get our shots off as quickly as possible so we can keep moving. Hello. <laughs> and I don't know what we're doing here, but stuff has happened. And we I'm have just people to talk to you, I think. Some scientist guy, I think. Soka? Yeah. Something like that. Never heard of him before. Yeah. Blind place for after all. So we fade back in, and what has he done? 
Sokolov, you monster. How could anyway, you? I'm sure somebody will deal with that. We have, we have to go find them and sit us under arrest because that's just unacceptable. I think I left my stove on. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, damn it, the iron's back on back at home. So some more cutscenes because Kojima. I mean, it wouldn't be a MGS game without cutscenes. <gasps> just wouldn't be right. Something would be wrong. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure what's going on right now. Let's find out what happened to Snake. Oh, oh dear. Oh, he's not looking for Oh my. <laughs> he's got some problems going on there. There's some cuts, yeah. some bruises, some broken bones. One long Seems fall off a short bridge later. No. <laughs> We've fine, all been yeah. there. Come yeah. on. Just poke yourself a little bit. Oh, I'm good now. Yeah. And those uh, injuries are actually healed in a specific order to uh, keep you so that you have to do as little menuing yeah. while you're healing them up as possible. Yeah, so like, um, there's six cuts and two broken bones. The game defaults to the uh, five cuts, and then it goes to a broken bone, but we quickly switch to the last cut because our menus are set up that way. So yeah. it's a tiny optimization, but it's all those little ones. That, little optimizations like that is why I'm going to... It's the little things that matter. They add up. Good job, right? Yeah. Snake didn't feel like rolling over that long. That's fine. <laughs> so again, it starts off a little bit like the Virtuous Mission. There's a uh, two screens with no guards, and then we'll have some enemies to deal with. Ideally, we'll make fools of them before they make fools of us. <laughs> I mean, Snake's just a big bully. It's fine. He really is. I mean, this is like. It's like that bully game, except it's Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember in high school, people rolling at me to bully me. Too, so, yeah, yeah that is true. You know, the other side... My bully's hitbox was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so one little thing about MGS games in general is when you menu, you want to be preferably rolling because doing it while you're running, um, it slows down your momentum. Rip. <laughs> Get an F in the chat. <laughs> That was intentional, of course. That was an orange manip. So this movement is pretty difficult. Um, we want to like take the corner as sharply as possible without bumping the uh, scenery. We'll demonstrate how these guards are idiots. Um, <laughs> for some reason, Snake can pull the pin on a grenade, and that therefore he doesn't make footstep noises. Yeah, on most ground types in the game, uh, you can just. If you're in the middle of throwing a grenade, everyone will just kind of look the other way. And I mean, if you thought that was impressive, he pulls the pin on a grenade and puts it back in his pocket. Like. <laughs> so here's just movement. Um, we're going to stand here for a little bit and move. So the guards are looking away from us. He's going to catch a notice of us as we go across the bridge, but it's fine. It's okay. He just thinks he sees someone, but it's clearly, it's, it's late at night. He's tired. It's fine. It's a little, it's, you know, it's dark, it's far away, it's fine. We're just making our way towards the first, uh, I guess, boss. It's just the Ocelot unit, so if there's any donations, Geek Etiquette, you got our time, you got a minute. We've got plenty. We have $10 from Plywood, who says, best of luck to you, Raichu. All of us in the Metal Gear Speedrun community are rooting for you. Remember, it's not just a box, it's a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Plywood. Got time for another one? No, go ahead. All right. We have uh, $20 from Joseph Joseph 316 who says, Hey, Raichu, we're cheering you on in the MGSR Discord, wishing you the best on your run. By the way, did you know you can find Don Taylor in MGS3 using only the 360 camera? Well, that, that's going to be a thing now, I guess. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> All right, and on the other side of this cutscene, we're going to be in the Ocelot Unit boss fight. And I go quiet here. Don't mind me. Yeah, this is a very uh, precise series of movements. This first enemy has to be uh, shot non-lethally. Into the next room for a headshot. Out the window to catch someone running by. A very precise leap to set up on that edge of the wall to draw two enemies over. To make sure they're both stunned. There'll be one shot between two boxes here. And one more at the bottom of the arena here. Very nicely done. Yeah, that was very good, yes. And 
for anyone who's like, why did you close your eyes when I threw the stun? They can give, like, they're so bright, they sometimes just give me a headache, so <laughs> don't mind that. That's fair. He's a method player. Like a I, method promised, <laughs> I have promised that you are at no risk of being blinded or put to sleep. So we just quickly grab our bug juice and our cardboard box. The box is like the most important item in the game, I would say. Yes, the box uh, is love, the box is life. Snake is just feeling a little bit hungry. That's what the bug juice is about. But he had a big lunch, so it's just one bug juice will do. But what about calorie mate? Oh, dear. Oh, no, they're actually bad for you. Bug juices are better. <laughs> well, this is Florida, right? So why does he just go to Waffle House? <laughs> True. So uh, what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see the controller, but I'm like alternating between circle and X. Mm -hmm. um, a Majora's, Rask, a, 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 a Majora's Mask runner who occasionally dabbles on MGS3 VPP um, found out just a couple of days ago that to kind of boost max um, swimming speed, if you alternate between the buttons every nine frames or so, which is like hard to count as a human, so I just kind of go back and forth in a rhythm, you can like get the maximum um, boost, the maximum speed for your swimming. Because unfortunately, like just mashing really fast doesn't do anything. It just kind of slows you down a little bit. So we've been like messing around trying to find like a smooth rhythm, and then VPP just came in and was like, "No, you're all doing it wrong. Here's the true way." And this is the way. So we're on our way through a minefield. I'm gonna shoot here. I need to distract the dog. Um, that dog barking attracts a guard like way over there, who would otherwise be in our way. Um, one step to our right and into the barbed wire fence, but uh, snake's a little tougher than most. So, so we're going to show there. off our um, box here and why it's literally the greatest thing ever invented. <laughs> Nothing to question about that box. Everyone should have one. Yeah. And of course, snake is so powerful he can run into an electric fence and not get hurt. Oh, look at the puppy. <laughs> I don't think that puppy wants to be pet. <laughs> you cannot pet the dog in Metal Gear Solid. I wish you I'm could, sorry. though. It would be fantastic. Oh. They're not friendly dogs. Just send a letter to Kojima and see what happens. I'd spend hours just petting the dog. So here is just... In fact, if there's a donation to read now, it's a pretty good time to do it. Yeah, we have plenty. We have $45 from Platonic Guy, who says, Hey, Raichu, Platonic here, watching the run from the MGSR Discord with everyone else. Best of luck with the run. I know you'll absolutely dismantle it. So that guy's a very intelligent soul. All right, this is going to be a quiet section. We're in the Ocelot yeah. boss fight. Uh, this is a very precise series of movements involving grenades and then attempting to get headshots with our silenced right. pistol uh, just as quickly as possible. The goat he just shot in the background is uh, used to try to distract Ocelot again. Ideally, we would have wanted to keep him in the center of the arena the entirety of the time. But if you see the small bar underneath his primary white health bar, uh, that's his stamina bar. And once we drain that, we'll have completed uh, this fight non-lethally. So unfortunately, Ocelot wouldn't loop. That's fine. It's just typical. And but we got, we got you, it's fine. So we grab a, his camouflage. Um, interestingly, Ocelot is one of the bosses that doesn't count as a kill if we defeated him non-lethally. Mm. Um, but we need that animal's camo. So right. we always go for non-lethal. On New Game Plus, you can uh, go lethal. And it can be faster, but it's really, really hard to get it to be faster. So. Apologies if you guys can't see anything right now. Yeah, on the none screen. of us can see anything. Uh, Don't worry, nobody but Raichu can. Raichu's got his TV turned way, way up, yeah. and it's still, I can't see anything. I've got those contrast strats. Don't worry about it. This is actually That's another green, element. Uh, oh, this is all, yeah. yeah. This is another portion where using the um, default camera is helpful yeah. because the camera will actually gently orient you in the direction that you need to go. You can see everything. That guy was listening when I was teaching him this stuff, boy. <laughs> he paid attention <laughs> in MGS3 college. So the caves is pretty quiet. Nice. if there's a donation, you might as well. Yeah, definitely. We have $5 from Iridescence, who says, Hey, Raichu, you're wasting your ammo. I'm glad to see the Irish Postal Service got you over to Orlando. <laughs> if I don't see a white flash, I'm launching an Inquisition. Best of luck to you, buddy. Glad to see you over there showing us off. Also, praise that Kojima pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So for the pain, um, no pun intended, he's a real pain. Um, we need to throw a smoke immediately. Because it keeps his bees calm, I guess. Just like real life. Yeah. Um, he'll put his shield back up. We'll launch another smoke. And we're just trying to catch headshots as much as we can. Um, Very solid. Headshot on the pain is, is difficult because his headbox, his headbox, his hitbox for his head is like the mouth area. So. It's like right around the nose. Fantastic. Well there you go. And that's how that it's was like, That was pretty good. That made up for that awful ocelot. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so his hitbox is like from his mouth to his chin, so it's really stupid. So you might hit the top of his head and no damage. You're like, what's going on, dude? But um, yes, yeah, so that's the pain. It's very picky. It's incredibly picky. It's like, I don't know what they did. And one thing I actually didn't mention is in phase two, um, he launches like bullet bees at you. And on the HD collection, when you're in first person, they just don't hurt you. It's really weird, but. It, on PS2, it's a whole different thing. You have to get in the water and all sorts. Of but again, we're in a bit of a quiet section, so work away with any donations. Certainly can. We have $25 from Daily May, who says, I love how a Pokemon is running MGS3. My donation goes towards my closest friend who went through cancer and beat it. You go, Raichu. Thanks, Daily. Oh, oh. Did you just go... What? What? <laughs> okay. You know, you said you weren't sure how swag you were feeling earlier. Yeah. I'm glad you went for it. He just wanted to go straight through the rocks and go on an adventure. So again, I did mention earlier while you're swimming, um, alternating buttons can speed you up. Unfortunately, in this section, it sort of doesn't matter because it's kind of timed with the uh, searchlight dudes on weird futuristic hover platforms. This is 1964, by the way. Um, I didn't know they had that technology. So they're like flying segways or whatever? It's like, it sounds like alien spaceships <laughs> flying around, you know? So if we were too fast, we'd just have to wait for that guy to move anyway, so there was no point in us uh, going as fast as possible in the swimming section. We might as well just do what we'd usually do. So we're coming up to what's pretty much one of the hardest rooms in the game that we have to visit a couple times, unfortunately. Um, the docks here isn't too bad. We just want another quick headshot. That's six now. Oh, nice. That doesn't count as a kill, honestly. I didn't do it. The barrel did. It's the barrel's fault. Yep. The important part of that is we cleared off the dock, which means we've just got free roam of the place, and we've hurt the end. So when we get to him, we'll be able to uh, destroy him. Now, I usually wouldn't grab that ammo just there, but I was a little bit low after Ocelot and whatnot, so I just pick it up just for safety. Yeah, there's a section later where, where we'll be needing to count our ammo very carefully. Yeah. So we're coming into the warehouse. And I'm not even going to explain it. I'm just going to let you see how bad the hitbox can be. We'll get our box on just in case. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> oh. That... That happens very rarely, but it does happen, and it's whatever. Fish and mailed. And it might have been because I didn't get over the railing quite right, but let's try again. There, that should be a little better. <gasps> what happened? <laughs> yeah, on yeah, this so. difficulty, if an enemy confirms that you were there, you immediately game over. So a lot of these rooms become moving through it at exactly the right time to make sure that enemies aren't looking where you will be. Fortunately, a lot of them are pretty generous with the checkpointing, though. You saw right there, you didn't, you didn't really lose a whole lot of time for that, that quick little check. It's just so far, like, the whole section is really awkward with your movement and whatnot, so you just kind of have to uh, roll with the punches, I guess, and just hope that <laughs> they look where they need to look. Roll with the punches, I see what you did there. I see uh, that, hey. <laughs> <laughs> You explained the joke and now it's not funny anymore, dude. Why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, 
This is a trick we'll use a couple of times. Uh, we're gonna headshot right out of the box. It helps uh, cancel some animations, and it makes sure that Snake is at the right height to get the headshot off quickly. And you might have seen a couple of times, when I'm standing up from a prone, I'm uh, quickly snapping the box on and off. That just cancels out the animation of us standing up. It saves like half a second. This is a very minor thing that I've gotten the habit. Really, the uses of a cardboard box are endless. Yeah, I know. You should get inside the box, and then you'll know what I mean. I just love to live in a box. It gives me those kind of powers. I mean, why not, right? You're a cat, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, a cat in a box. If you fits, you sits, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think I did that I'm recently. Sorry. <laughs> did he just tell me not to go fast? Does he know what I'm doing yeah, here? Yeah, you need to slow down. You're going way too Bro, fast. Bro, the enemy. What do you expect? <laughs> so we're disguised as... We are now Dr. Snake, um, PhD. <laughs> um, the guards don't pay any attention to the fact that there's a scientist with a bandana. That's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> the scientists are definitely a little more intelligent. They know we don't belong here. But it's fine because... While they're intelligent on one end, they're idiots on the other, so... Huh? We're under attack! Huh? Uh, it's fine! <laughs> the side bumped to... into huh? me. It's the enemy. <laughs> under attack by a man viciously love-tapping everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so don't let their scientist coats fool you. These guys are not much more intelligent than the guards. Um, which I'll show off, like, right now. Good afternoon. Huh. I mean, this is a science lab. I'm sure they get deliveries all the time. No, I'm sure. This is like a scientific marvel for them. Yes, moving, moving boxes. They move themselves. It's not a science box, so they have no concerns. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Amazon drones were really far yes. behind the time if they were doing this in the 60s. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll see the old school Amazon drones again later, though. <laughs> so we're going to see, like, the only useful out-of-bounds in the game. Um, there is another one on PS2, but this isn't PS2, so we can't use it. So we're going to go... Uh, oh! Hello. Look Goodbye. Go. Now walls are no object. <laughs> I will not be contained by mere mortal walls. Walls, you cannot. And we're outside again. I don't know how that happened. The box is where I stay in. Walls, no. Sorry, but I don't have time to chat. We're, we're in a hurry There's here. a box with five walls. So you might notice my stamina is getting kind of low. Um, one of the afflictions that um, tackles Snake when his stamina gets low is his aim kind of goes a bit weird. So equipping the animal's camo just removes that entirely. Uh, yeah, playing this game casually, there are a lot of um, different survivalist elements, your stamina being one of them, and the main thing it affects is your aim. So <clears throat> we just took the opportunity to switch camos. So some of the boss camos have, well, all of them do. They have their own, like, special abilities, I guess, or their little perks. Um, Ocelot's animals camo, of course, being like a gun, a gun fanatic, is he has a steady aim at all times. Mm -hmm. Yep, so Snake's posture will continue to deteriorate as he gets hungrier and hungrier, but he'll keep it together. So the fear is really scary, and it's, it's actually, I think it's just giving Snake a heart attack. Um, oh. Uh oh. So we're gonna have to play Dr. Snake here real quick. But we, he might be dead, but we've got the power to revive him. Okay, he's back. We all good. Chorat's done his retaliation. And I'm gonna beat this boss without touching him. Good night, fear. <laughs> I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Only slightly less scary than advertised. I won't be, I won't be brought up on... I won't be blamed for that. So we quickly grab some... So, oh. There's a lot of incidental deaths that Raichu will yeah. not be taking the blame for in this round. No, oh, exactly. Barrels, swinging things from trees, you know. So the reason for... Actually, I'm gonna let one of you guys explain that while I do the warehouse. Why the fear works like that. Watch that. They don't know. <laughs> they didn't take those notes. Huh? Alright, I'll do the warehouse and then I'll do it. Gotta have to do everything <laughs> around here. <laughs> There's another box headshot. That's the hard one. Like, this is the part that's scared me the most, so I'm glad I got through that first try. But basically, it's pretty well known, even amongst like casual players, that when you stun the fear with a stun grenade, your lethal damage is just non-lethal for some reason. So we kind of lure him over to us at the trap, 
Control is done, and when we stand up, um, he just something happens. He, he dies, I guess. I don't know. So we're coming up to everybody to watch probably the most famous boss in the game, um, the end, not the end of the game. It's what he's called. Um, on, luckily, I won't be partaking in a two-week sniper battle or any of that nonsense, and I won't be fast-forwarding the clock to kill him early. That's like the best way to do it, though. I've got That's a better way. Thought. All right. So we're going to shoot because we need to roll there because that guy will hear our footsteps. Um, if he hears my footsteps, it's kind of funny. Sometimes he'll see me, sometimes he won't. I'm not going to take the risk, though, so we just roll. Um, my stomach is growing. Snake's hungry, but he's also a bit busy. He doesn't have time to eat right now. And we're out of there. A little radio call explaining who's in front of me as if I don't already know. Which I don't, of course, because I've never played this game before. I have no idea. So I'm going to throw a smoke. That seems like a good idea. Um, now he can't see us. So I basically just morphed into John Cena. Um, <laughs> if everyone say hello to the end, he's up there. He can probably hear you. And well, actually, we got some... <laughs> <laughs> we do have a bit of time for one or two donations because this is just finding our way to the end. All right, sounds good to me. We have $5 from Mini144. He says, hey, Raichi, remember our promise. Let me see that vent clip. Everyone in MGSR wants to see it. Well, you got your wish, Minnie. <laughs> <laughs> we have $100 from Knockout Slacks, who says, Snake! Okay, so at the end, we're going to use the footstep cancel again. Um, yep. And we'll end up right on top of him. Because his, ear, his hearing for an old man is incredible. So Ooh. we're going to stick spray twice, hold Very him up, hot. back to our stick spray. Uh, did you... When his Mosin touches the floor, ah. we can go again. <laughs> Right to the body, we have to hit him with the stun. We look up, because I don't want to get blinded. He's already dead. <laughs> oh no, no, not hardly. <laughs> He's surprisingly hardy for an old man. And right again, six spray. Yep, there's three grenades here, and they all have to be right to the body. Because hitting him in the body with the grenade like resets his AI. I'm going to wait till Snake's coughs. I'm going to roll away. Basically, you want to keep him in a constant loop. <coughs> it's all right, Snake. And we let him come to us. Actually, if Fizz, if you have any of those cough drops left, I think Snake needs one. He's... <laughs> it's not sounding too good. Yeah, but actually, if Snake is in the middle of an action, uh, which is why we had the Sig Spray out, uh, then he won't cough. So yeah, can... so it's important that I... Uh, oh, I want to get rid of those stuns because I don't need them anymore. Um, yeah, it's important that when I'm standing still waiting for him to come to me, I don't keep hold of Square and have a Sig Spray in my mouth. Um, because Snake won't cough. He won't cough if he's moving or holding a gun up or whatever. And uh, that will just mean that when I'm trying to like punch the end and Sig spray him and whatnot, he's just going to cough and he's going to run away. And he's pretty fast for an old man. Somebody like over 100 years old, he can, he can move. Yeah, I remember when I, last time I played through, it's like I'd walk to one section and then all of a sudden he's gone. <laughs> so, obviously. Everyone, sing along if you know the words. No, 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 no. <laughs> Donations. Perfect time. We got two minutes. More than true. All right. We have $100 from Precious Roy, who says, Yo, Raichu, the Metal Gear community is stoked for your run. Even Don Taylor is watching. Now let the legend come to life and bring some of that Irish thunder. Here's a donation for Runner's Choice. MGSR is behind you. We have $25 from Big No-No, who says, whoa, this host is amazing. Thank you. Hope we'll be seeing a lot more of her, whoever she is. 25 more bucks if she sings the chorus to Snake Eater. Just the I'm still in the dream bit. Donation goes towards the bonus game, because the more runs, the better. I don't know if I'll be doing that. I'm, uh, I don't, I don't want to torture chat with that. Well, even if you don't, we have a... 
We have something coming up after the run. We have something that should very satisfy special. You. Yeah, definitely. Let's just scratch the itch. You can keep going if you want. There's, there's a lot yeah, more yeah, ladder. There's a ladder a boss. Lot. Yeah, definitely. All right. We have $10 from Mel Glenn Solid, who says, Gotta support my boy Raichu. I know you'll do great. <laughs> Since Snake Eater singing was already met, this is for the legend of Animorphs to continue. MGSR is here behind you. P.S. Shout outs to Kojima out there in the crowd. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God, Kojima came. That's cool. <laughs> you made a special appearance. Hi, Kojima. Kojima-san. All right, so that's the ladder. Woo! We finally defeated the ladder boss. That was probably that was the hardest a... boss. I mean, holding up on the analog stick for like two minutes straight. Perfect IL. So the mountains, I hate them. And I think every runner of this game shares that emotion. Um, yeah, the mountains. So it's a lot of movement yeah. and making the guards look like idiots, which is basically like, that's MGS3 in a nutshell. That's movement. 88% of this game. Uh, yeah, so most of the game. Catch some attention. Oh. Six spray. That guy's on his way. He has an RPG, which is kind of terrifying. What's funny is they give him RPGs on UEX, but like, if you get an alert, it doesn't matter because you get the game over. They'll never touch you with it, so... It just looks menacing. Let's run to the next area. Snake is a, an expert mountain climber. He's also hungry, if you're wondering yeah. what that noise is. Yeah, it keeps me... His, his stomach is rumbling. Yeah. He needs some ramen noodles. I don't know about you, if any of you guys out there have ever climbed the mountain, but if you haven't done it, donning a cardboard box, you're doing it wrong. So the next time you're out there, just make sure you bring your box. Yeah. The reason we use that so much, especially going up inclines, is because um, when you're in the box, there isn't a separate animation uh, for going up strenuous terrain as there is on foot. So the run speed is basically the same, or like the animation speed is essentially the same, so it doesn't slow down. Uh, we've got just up ahead here the most intelligent guard, um, so we have to be really careful. Oh, they're not going to make it. I clenched a little bit there. Ooh. Oh! That was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you just wanted us to mention how if you're not in the box, you can hang on to the edge of ledges. Yeah, so it's, in the box, like strats. Snake uh, plummets to his debt regardless. Um, but without the box, I can run off there. It's no problem. He doesn't care. He'll catch. It's like, all right, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Gets me every time. <laughs> just proving that Snake is just a... A big old bully. So we'll use our box just a little bit here. We don't want to use it too much. On this green patch, we want to get off. Yeah, we actually need that guy to hear our footsteps. So I'm going quiet because this is this is hard. This is HQ. Yeah. To make this cycle, you actually have to flip up that terrain and then book it as quickly over here as you can. Peace. That was easy. There you go. <laughs> That's always an intense part, but you just made it look like it was just bread on butter. It's just easy. Stop Give talking up. about food, the grumbling and the I, food I'm and the ramen. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> I know. I, I keep hearing the grumbles, and now I'm just, I'm hungry. I thought it was yeah. you at first. <laughs> I thought so, too. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I really should have eaten before the run. No, you should have. I, I like told everybody to eat beforehand. So, uh, Make sure to listen, too. I don't know what we were doing up here, but I, don't know, I think we met with Eva, is her name? I've never heard of her before. I've never seen her in my life. Um, but she'll have some noodles for us, so we'll grab a pack. Um, funnily enough, Snake's not even going to be one who eats them. But it was a, a gift from Eva, I believe. Very simplistic gift, but it's a thought that counts. Yeah. I would be gifted some noodles right now. I'd be okay with it. I mean, if someone gave me noodles, I'd be like, okay, thank you. I'll eat that right now. Thanks. So I don't know how you guys climb stairs or descend stairs, but this is how I like to do it personally. Hey, I think it's jump very. Up the railing, it's fine. I think it's probably the most optimal way to do so. Um, so we're going towards what's probably the hardest boss. Um, so oh, I'm, this boy! Uh, oh, yeah. The memories. So even like the casual players know this one just yeah. sucks. Yep, ideally this should be a very tight loop, but there's some things that are just going to be out of your control. So he's gone left, which is ideal. 
And here's another fun uh, property of the cardboard box. It is fireproof. <laughs> Somehow, paper is fireproof. My chute's been ripped. It's not just fireproof, it will put out fire on you. Your yeah. cycles here are uh, three shots, then two. Because you don't want to knock him down too early. Yeah, so you want to just basically keep him in a constant loop, and there you go. Hard as possible. I just made it look easy. Just like you drew it up. What you do, right? I can't. It's right on butter. You're just I making feel like, like everything looks the food. great. I feel like I'm uh... <laughs> putting us to shame on his first playthrough. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a big liar at myself. Like, oh, this is the hardest boss, like, by the way. I feel like based on the practice room, you were hustling us now. Yeah. <laughs> so more cutscene. God, like a cutscene of Snake climbing up a ladder. Like, I mean, who needs that? Like, come on, oh, Kojima. That was dude. a boss fight. And I know you're back there listening to me, Kojima. I, you know what you did. <laughs> it's all in the name of realism, right, you? So we need to roll here. So that guy, he'll notice us, but if we just ran across, he's going to catch us. Um, more than most areas, it's really important to use the fixed camera here because the 3D camera adds like tons of lag. It's ridiculous. Um, I believe this will be our eighth quick headshot, eight or ninth. More like, oh, sorry, I meant that was going to be our ninth one. Um, so, as I say, these guys are very intelligent. <laughs> Beyond, it's ridiculous. I mean, I don't know how. Yeah, if they're not in alert mode. Oh, that guy. Sorry. He had your number. Oh. They, they heard you talking about them. <laughs> wow, that's really impressive technology. <laughs> I mean, it's Kojima. What do you expect? So, like, it's very important to note that, like, cycles are, like, really tight. And obviously, it took me a bit longer to hit that first guard than it should have. So yeah. I just... Totally ruined yeah. the cycle. So one extra shot, and basically it throws off everything. Because and... he's now looking towards me when I yeah. get there. It's, it's terrible. Terrible. Um, I'm going to shoot this guy. Tragedy. I don't know who he is, but he seems important, so I'm going to go make friends with him. Um, we shot him to get him to notice us. Now he's coming towards us. And the very smoke grenade thing. was to cover uh, because there's an enemy oh. down that hallway. God, I hate when people see me and they just drop like that. It's like... He means in real life. That happens to him a lot. I think yeah. there might be a yeah. possible. I think there's people a doctor swoons. office back here. It makes just... people weak, like their knees weak, and then they just fall. And I don't know. Maybe their stamina is just low. No, I'm just dragging no, this guy over here. I'm just gonna drag him over. Maybe there's a doctor around or something because he, he doesn't look well right now. <laughs> so, oh, oh, Snake, what have you done? Put him in that locker. That, he's safe there. No one can. No one's gonna steal his uh, wallet or anything while he sleeps. Um, but we stole his clothes. And his face? And apparently his face. <laughs> hey, Raiden, how you doing? So we are now, we are now Rykov. It's just that simple. And we're on our way to... Uh... God, I love the way he runs. I know. <laughs> yeah. Just he bulldozing down that hallway. Yeah, I know, like he's gonna say, he runs with a purpose. And just because this area is kind of quiet, you might have noticed I'm always rolling into like load zones and doors and whatnot. It saves a bit of time because you just kind of get there a bit faster. And uh, from this point, for the next couple of minutes, donations are welcome because it's very, very quiet. It's perfect. We have $500 from Mr. Charisma, who says, here's 500 for the crowd to give me their best Come well, on, you can do better than that. <laughs> a little bit louder, louder. There we go, there we go. You have to believe in yourself. Tell me. Woo! Stop it. Who have you been talking to? Got time for another one? Absolutely. Yep. Two and a half minutes. <laughs> we have $10 from Norrissey61, who says, Norrissey here, Stop first time it. watching AGDQ live Who after viewing Bruce literally Jensen hundreds of hours worth How on you YouTube. It's making the week go by so much faster. Shout out to Raichu, who is killing this game. Thanks for the laughs during the scientist section. Save the cardboard boxes, kill the animals.
If you've got more, load them up, Geek. Oh, yeah. Oh, Keep them up. Sorry, I'm sorry. We have no worries. $200 yes, from Sponge dead. Snake, who says, Hey, AGDQ, thank you to all of the runners, staff, and everyone who makes this possible. Keep fighting the good fight. Can't wait for the ladder section. Donation goes to Runner's Choice Incentive. Plenty of time. All right, we have $5 from Brandon Jimenez18, who says, in loving memory of my grandma nanny, may she rest in peace. Let's beat cancer. Let's take a look at your body, shall we? No, that's weird, dude. Yeah. Please, no. Just please, more donation, please, when I listen to this. Oh, please, no. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. We have plenty. So, no. We have another whopping $200 from Cal36, who says, preventing cancer is the most important part of this week, but the Ocarina of Time well, glitch exhibition is the second most started. important. Let's meet this goal. What is your target? As in, that is runner's choice incentive, so and anything runner's choice will also go to that glitch exhibition. Uh, no, actually, Volga, my target is to have more donations for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. I don't know what you're on about. And there's plenty of time, so I think you could probably get another one or two in. Gotcha, gotcha. We have $10 from WK1992, who says, Hey, ride to MGS, an extra $10 if you get the Suchinico snake. Thanks to GDQ for all good they do. Long time watcher. Thank you for your donations. <laughs> so I don't know what was happening there. because I don't think anyone dark. knows what was happening there. Yeah, we've really been through it uh, together for the last couple of minutes there. Yeah. Someone was getting beat up, newborn babies. I don't know. It's all I know Kojima is we dialogue. have control back. Kojima things. Yeah. Thanks, Kojima. Thanks, Kojima. Oh, and so Snake really got hurt, and he's... He, I think he's died again. This is, this is becoming a bit of a habit now. Oh, no, it's okay. He's back. You helped him. Oh, you guys brought him back. Good job, guys. Good job. You believed? <laughs> oh. All right, Johnny. Heck of an arm, but you push him right into the corner so you can collect the contents of his pockets just as fast as possible. I think he's got the Please. shakes. Oh, look, noodles. I was looking for those. <laughs> Shaking him up a little too much. So we're also going to have a cigar. We need to calm down. Snake needs to calm down after what happened to him. Dying twice like that. It's just, it's stressful. So we're going to throw our noodles, we're going to get our grenade out. Show our noodles. We're going to footstep cancel again. Peace. And we'll just, I guess we'll climb under here. This looks like a good place to be. It's, I mean, it's completely opposite to where the old guys are, so... I mean. <laughs> so we're just going to run along the wall. There's always safety when you run along a wall. If anyone wants to come in, the door's open. Just come on in! Do we have time for a very quick donation? All right, we have... Drum roll, please. <laughs> Wait, I, need, I need more drum roll. I need more. More drum rolls! We have a massive 10,000. <laughs> that is massive! Hey all, yet a year, <laughs> ladders and fireproof boxes, what a thrill. Loving this amazing run, let's go. Dude, that's just... Let's go. Thank you so much. Woo! I'm not even sure, I can't like, anything I say is just like, nothing compared to what just happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you got, I need to know what's going on, even though it's your blind playthrough. I, he doesn't know. I need to know. So we're, I'm, I'm going to pick up this life medicine um, for safety's sake. I'm going to break Snake's leg again. I'm sorry, Snake. I think Occupational hazard. I understand why Snake's such a bully now, because oh, look, you bully him. Oh, um, Basically, in the stores here, we're just going to make our way to the other side. So it's just yeah. a lot of true vents. Yeah, you think you know, we have time for a donation? I think we have time for a couple, honestly. Yeah, yeah. just a few, and maybe something Leave for some ramen. to eat. Yeah. yeah. All right, no sounds food for snake. good. We have five hundred dollars from Kalefest. No message, no problem. Thank you so much. My goodness, much. The donations Wonderful. are rolling in. Thank you guys so much. Uh, they're all for the they're rolling as fast as I know. Paint. It's all for this guy. Yeah. We have $100 from Kirby Master, and no message, no problem. Thank you so much. Oh. 
Chicago. He's one more in. Can we pet the pupper? No! <laughs> I want to pet the pupper. It's a Kojima game. You can't pet the dog because the dog can't have dialogue. But I want to so. pet the pupper. So again, now that's he has weird. A, he's got a really bad <laughs> habit of like all this dying carry on. I forever. I mean, I don't know what his, what his problem is, so I'm gonna help him with this this time. We don't have a fake death pill, so we'll just throw a grenade in the water. Sorry, Snake. It's for the speed run, you understand, I'm sure. So the Sorrow is like an anti-boss. There we go. The Sorrow is an anti-boss, so instead of trying to defeat him, we actually have to defeat ourselves. Really makes you think. Yeah. Um, now, you can drown yourself if you want. You can scroll, you can uh, crawl to the end of the river, whatever suits you. The grenade is the fastest way to do it by like one second if your menus are perfect. Yeah, uh, especially course, since we had the cigar out earlier, which slowly drains your health. Yeah. Which, of course, obviously mine always are perfect. And the more people you kill, the more people you actually see floating down the river with you while you exactly. walk down. So, if in a non lethal playthrough like mine, the only ones you'll see are the bosses. Yeah. Um, because they always die, even when it's non lethal. Um, so we're gonna go meet Eva again, I believe is her, her name was. I'm not really sure. I don't know. She has a nice outfit, though. So we'll go behind jealous. this waterfall. You a little jealous? I'm a little jealous, little. yeah. You could probably fit more donations in because this is just gonna be a I long black that. screen. Really? <laughs> All right. Awesome. It wouldn't fit you. You need to lose a little weight. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> We have $1,000 from Ooh, all Take Zero. Goodness, aren't you? What are you doing to these people? Seriously. No mess, no problem. What can I say? We have $100 from Ahu, Ahu Ganesh, my apologies, 145, who says, we must honk. You know, I was waiting for that, for a goose <laughs> game. <laughs> it's true, you, you said it multiple times today. It's the first time of your run, though, so. So we're just gonna pick up another box because you can never have too many boxes. If one box is good, two must be better, right? It, That's yeah. how that works. I remember in MGS2, the, 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 your box would wear down, so eventually you'd have to get a new one, so you know, collect boxes. Turns out boxes were built sturdier back in these days. Apparently. I don't know what happened later down the road, but... Amazon got cheap. Things got cheap, yeah. Guess that's it. Hey, another ladder. More like this game and ladders, I mean, all of I them. love ladders. It's probably a metaphor, like a Kojima metaphor. I mean, everything in Kojima yes. games are no. a metaphor. Let's be honest. <laughs> they get that. This is Different one of the metaphors. best rooms in the game for seeing just how uh, interesting the enemy AI is. You took out exactly one of them, and you're good to go. It's not a spin move there. That's very important. Got you a nice 360. Yeah. That's an RNG minute. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I'm an expert. <laughs> expert yeah, in exactly. first place here. Magical. So one little thing that I actually haven't mentioned before is when you want to climb a ledge, the um, best way to do it is to, uh, like, roll into the ledge and then press triangle. You, like, clip onto it. Mm -hmm. It's a very small thing that's, like, not really that important, but we do it anyway. So here we're gonna have our Mark 22, we're gonna shoot this, and it's gonna scare everyone. I mean, right. that's a fuel tank, a, a fuel uh, canister. If you were using the wrong guns, you'd just immediately blow it up. Yeah, so if you use a lethal weapon on that, it's a continue, it's a game over. These uh, engineers are just reskin scientists who are just as stupid. I was really into that. That's some good music. It's, don't worry, you get a yeah, you get another chance right here. Yeah, like the caution music is like next level. It's a jam. Just sit there and just. It's really unfortunate because we don't hear it all that often. And a speed run down. <laughs> no, like in this is probably the area we hear it the longest. So that's all those bombs planted. I don't know what that was about, but we just did it anyway, I guess. Those things looked important, and I had C3, so. <laughs> yeah, why not? Exactly. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that guy gets it. So more cutscenes, because MGS3. And we've, we get to meet Vulcan. So Vulcan, we're going to kill this lethally. Is a fight. 
Because, uh... Bro. Yeah, because your technique here is very... Uh, because he, he didn't actually dead. He'll show up later. So, so adhering to, kill like... It's yeah. fine. That was fun. Yeah, it's oh, all it was just phase one. <laughs> yep. Oh, the only one person dying here is you, my friend. Oh, Volgan. This boss fight is as much about your aim as anything, because you have to watch... We're gonna do a quick weapon switch and finish him off with what we have left. So You're... I ran out of SVD ammo, so I just quickly switched to the... Where you're uh, aiming is a little questionable, but, you know, we... <laughs> I don't think it's questionable we did at all. It. It's very intentional. <laughs> yeah, it is, like, the last thing I want to do is have to try and keep a just aim, so we just shoot him in it. Like, the SVD does I so much damage. I thought there was a rule anyway. to not shoot someone. <laughs> I, well, that was how I was told. It's more of a suggestion <laughs> That's than fair. a rule. And if I can ask someone who handles the audio to lower the game audio a bit, because this section is really low. What? Exactly. This is most definitely intentional, because it does chip damage and... Oh, no one here. That's good. Yeah. You, you see the technique he's using is um, when he's firing off the RPG, it's... Unequipping and equipping it as quickly as possible because in this section and for the several sections that follow you have unlimited ammo Yeah, so you're really just dumping. Yeah, you can just unload yeah. as much as you'd like like you're, unlimited rocket launcher And in a best case scenario, you're going to do the equivalent of about one or two hits during the actual fight section Yeah, but yeah, you'll see when we get there that um, that portion of the game is really based on uh how Eve is feeling on any given day. So every piece of damage we can do so there are less cycles later is good. Yeah. So this whole section is just stun grenades left and right. Um, yeah, there are a few groups of enemies that have to go down. The yeah. rest are just to protect your life for later. Yeah. So Eva, like uh, T3 said, there's some guys that we have to knock out because Eva just refuses to move otherwise. Here it's just because I don't want those guys taking away all my health. Yeah, she'll just be at a standstill, you don't, you, until you shoot those guys, and then, okay, fine, we'll move now. I mean, she told you they ha they're, they're there. She kind of has expectations. But I mean, she's a, she's a badass on a motorcycle. I'm sure she can move, you know, around. I'm not gonna dirty her hands. You know, you, you have a point. At this point, we can just enjoy the dramatic camera angles. There's nowhere I can get a clear shot of the Shago Hot anyway, so... And this is, like, definitive proof that Kojima wanted to make movies, not video games. And he just settled. Q win MGS4. <laughs> yeah, if you're playing through this game casually, uh, if you go through your codec conversations and talk to some of these characters, like, one character is an absolute movie fanatic. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, James so, Bond gets mentioned. Like, yeah, Paramedic is a big fan of movies. Mm -hmm. um, he thinks and, Kojima is projecting. Yeah. And pop culture, so... Oh, Kojima's a huge movie fan. Oh, absolutely. So. Especially well, American movies. Kojima's also... And like then we have a shot Kojima. up on top of the building. He loves himself, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that group was one of our mandatory checkpoints, so Evo wouldn't have moved on until we took them down. Our stun grenades are placed like deliberately, we're not just throwing them randomly. Um, we want to get them as close to like their feet as we can because the closer we are, the more our chance of them being stunned. Yeah. If they're, if I'm not close enough, it just kind of uh, blinds them a bit, and they just stand there rubbing their eyes like they just woke up. Essentially, we just want to like stun everybody. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good. Right, so we went ahead and put on our life medicine. Okay, everyone gets one. I have my one. We're gonna switch to the, uh... Ooh, dear. Yeah, that was another RPG right <laughs> up there, so... I just, like, Very much in the nick of time. Um, well, we got him, it's okay. Oh, yeah, just click things here, I forgot. Yep, this section is a long uh, chase camera. It's just gonna be enemies on bikes driving at you for the length of this area. Rail uh, shooter, basically. There are some cool things you can do. Right, she's not killing any of these people. That's true. Pavement. The lack you know, of helmet. Lack of helmet. 
a lack of foresight on their part. Yeah, they were. They didn't have their safety precautions. I mean, yeah. I can't be held responsible for that. No. Yeah. They decided to get on that bike this morning. I don't know. And no, because no, everyone's in motion for this and several other sections uh, still to come, you'll notice that Rai is having to lead his shots. Uh, you know, there, there is bullet drop and there is uh, motion between you and the other riders. Yes, there are, there's physics, effectively. Right. And I mean, this, from here on, it's mostly the same for the next couple of minutes, so Geek yep. Edigo wants to read some donations. Perfect. Sure thing. We have $5 from Froge, who says, this won't get read. Au contraire, we just read it. We have $25 from Ian30, who says, you're all great. Very impressed with all the runs, and I appreciate the gaming for good. Honks and hearts. Aww. Oh, no. We're honking again. We we'll caused some fireworks to celebrate that $10,000 donation, eh? Woo! So we're gonna try and um, deal as much damage to the Shagahot as possible. We can get about about a stamina bar and a bit worth of damage before it caps out. The uh, important part is to shoot as fast as we can, but be accurate because if we hit his threads, um, those guys there, if you don't know what threads are, um, he slows down like that. Yeah. So we're, it's, we want to shoot fast and accurate, which is easier said than done, but we'll do our best. So it's very like a timing based sort of mashing. Right. It also has the uh, added side benefit, as you've seen, of making him really annoyed. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, it's fine. He didn't feel a thing. Oh, he's... Yeah, he's got a helmet on or, or something, I think. I think the tank is built out of cardboard boxes. That might be it. You're on to something here. So we got... We got a good bit taken off. That's fine. I'm... That'll do. Fireproof, rocket-proof boxes. Where can I get one? Patent pending. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn. Are, I mean, anybody got a time machine? Kojima's Pat in the audience. You could just ask him. Kojima, you got a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very simple little section. We're setting up for the Shagohad to come across this bridge. We've already taken care of three of our four targets. Just get rid of all the ammo. Who needs it? Yeah, we're I setting one up. One bullet. One shot, one kill. <laughs> No, oh, I'm busy right now, Eva. No kills. That's what you mean. Yeah. Whatever, dude. <laughs> <Easy>. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Kobe. So we'll get our RPG. And we're going to shoot the threads. Um, hope that Eva goes behind them quickly. And we'll shoot at his back, because this is where he's vulnerable. Right. And we'll preferably get two shots off per cycle. But that's not always a guarantee. Yeah, essentially you're timing for as soon as the Shagahad starts moving again. Uh, and if you get a shot off and you're still aimed at the uh, generator on the back, you'll be able to take a second hit. Yeah, if not, then you have to like wait a while and then and do it all over again. Eva's angles of approach are largely unpredictable. So you're really just hoping to see head on or, you know, if you have even the slightest amount of, of Reactor in sight. Take the shot and see what happens. Yeah, I mean it's worth. It, it, you're you're infinite ammo, so right. you have the shots to take. Yeah, you're not worried about it. No. You missed no. every rocket launcher shot you don't take. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> in this entire section, ammo is of no concern to me. I'll waste it if I want, Volgan. So we can catch him on the side of his like back plate or whatever. That's just a bit tricky. And we really, like, this is more or less just hoping Eva gets around behind them as quickly as possible. Right. There we go. Thanks for the boat of confidence, Eva. Yeah. And as you would expect from giant armored tanks, this thing does have weaponry. We just don't intend to see any of it. Yeah, because shooting them in the tread basically stun locks them entirely, so we can't do anything. Yeah, if it did fire on you, you could just put it on the box, though. Oh, yeah, just put it on the box. We're fine. Yeah. Um, 
But, yeah, but essentially, if you don't shoot the treads and you just keep moving around, he'll actually like shoot at you, and it's a whole mess. So then it's a fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's an actual fight. Yeah. This is um, Ring Around the Rosie. It's like a mini game. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just part one. Sparkles. This is just there part one of part two. We now have to defeat Volgan. For what? Now we just shoot the guy in the tank. Or don't. That's fine too, Snake. Whatever. Yeah, it's principally the same. You'll be shooting the treads to stop the tank. Now you're aiming at Vulgan himself since he's powering the tank at this point. Yeah, and this time you actually have like a limited amount of ammo, uh, but there are ammo drowns that happen. Bruh. Especially you just don't want to move. <laughs> okay, so hopefully now he'll, he'll pay attention to me and we can get rid of him. That's really not good. Uh, right incoming. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's not going to plan. Where's the box? So the lag, the lag. <laughs> the lag! CQC! Yeah, oh, exactly. if only. I don't know how CQC would go oh, okay. well so with we got it. Oh, language Vulcan. Definitely not. There you go. Definitely not perfect, but we didn't die, and that's, that's more important. We survived. Together. With the box. Metal Gear survive? No, that's a... Oh, that's... no, please, no. Come on. Not even as a meme, no. dude. Not even as a meme. <laughs> no. We don't talk about that. Get off the couch. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Fizz is ready. Fizz is like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back to another bike chase. Um, and honestly, if you want to read some donations, it's more of the same, I guess. All right, no problem. We have $100 from No Name, who says... Snake, goose, both hide in boxes to sneak into places. I don't see the difference. Okay. Honk, honk, honk! I gotta go. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll see myself out. <laughs> Got time for another one? <laughs> we have $25 from All Zero Traps. He says, Hut, hut, honk, yeah! OOT incentive, please. Five dollars per person. I've lost the cancer. I love this community. Thanks for keeping this up for ten years. Here's to ten more. So just as before, it's just a lot of stun grenade timing them, trying to get rid of them as quickly as we can. We're going to take a, re a decent amount of damage. Um, well, because we're just using stuns and we have to wait for them to explode and whatnot. Uh, the checkpoint after this, we need a really well-placed one because there's a guard with an RPG. Uh, we need to either blind or stun him. Right about here. And stun the man. He done. Or he's blinded, but that's good enough, so he won't be able to shoot at us. Now we're coming into what is literally the worst area uh, because these platform dudes, they're, they're a pain. Um, they can just get above your head, so I can't hit them, but they can continue to hit me. Yeah, it, it's similar to the pain where their hitbox and their headbox are uh, differently uh, shaped, but also they can fly over you. It's a little uh, not in the right place. Right. This is very this is very 60s Bond though. I love this. Oh yeah. Yeah, like this MGS3 is like James Bond the video, like a good James Bond game. Because mm. uh, there's been plenty of James games made after uh, James Bond. None of them are any good. <laughs> Ooh, wow, big words. <laughs> them, gonna I take know, you out the I back way after this. Fighting words. Yeah, I, I think some N64 and aficionados might disagree with you. Oh yeah, yeah Goldeneye. Oh yeah, Goldeneye. Oh, yeah, oh there I you forgot go. about that one. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks too compared to MJ3. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back and turn oh. that again, by the way. Uh. So it's the main thing is I want to get rid of the guy who's coming center to me, like ASAP, because he's the real trouble. The rest of them are trouble for sure, like, and they'll do they'll do their fair share of damage, but I just don't want somebody right above me who I can't hit. And we better listen to Eva because that log will do a lot more damage than a piece of wood has any right to do. <laughs> I 
Hitbox, what are you? I must. Oof, that must have hurt. So we're on the last uh, screen of Bike Chase. And in fact, we're almost finished altogether. Um, it's just the same idea. We'll just mark 22 the guys on the bikes and wait till we get to the end. What do you say, Ryan? Time for some donations? I think so. Sounds good to me. We have $10 from Kreish, who says, I'll donate an additional $10 if the crowd goes, snake, snake, snake. And an additional $10 if the crowd also goes, honk, honk, honk. Well, we already did that one. Well, there we go. Oops. Let's see that $10. I didn't mean to spoil that. <laughs> did you send that? No. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> we have $100 from Alex Rain One, who says this run is pretty solid. Oh. No, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. No. Maybe. We have $5 from Apache227 who says, MGSR, let's go, Raichu. And you are on UT, my friend. My apologies. I'm having an unusually hard time to hit these guys. <laughs> See, I just keep hearing a gun going off, and then I look back and I'm like, oh, yes. Hitbox. Yeah, somehow I did it a two and one there, but all right. I can't complain about two and one. Oh, that's a good way that's to close the bike it case. Everybody's favorite part. Going for a jump. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Pretty nice, yeah. That was pretty good, anyway, yeah. Yeah, it was all right, I guess. Yeah. I've seen better. <laughs> Whatever. I, mean, I could do that, but I don't want to. Everyone's a critic. <laughs> Oh, cut in, cut in, cut oh, cut. oh, here we go. So one little thing um, that I picked up, or I found out while I was learning the game and practicing for GDQ was... Let me have some more. One run I did, I wasn't really fully paying attention to what I was doing. Um, and I fed Eva on this screen when usually we don't feed her till a little later on. Um, and it turns out if you do that, Eva will make it to the end, no problem. So it's... It saves us, like, about five seconds. Um, yeah, typically you do it later when she starts complaining on her yeah. own, and you'll see her slow down. Because we don't have to open the menu a second time, which is all... The, because ideally we'll open the menu as few times as we can get away with. So since it's forced on us due to uh, the fact that we have to heal her, we can just do it there. And that last area, we didn't have to call for you or signal for her to follow us. From here on, we will. She's a little slow, you know. Eh, being stabbed by a tree will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point I just eventually knocked her out and dragged her across the way. I'm like, you're too slow. Let's go. <laughs> that tells us a lot more about you than, uh, than it's I'm, a snake. I'm impatient. I can't help it. So um, while we're in this section, we're moving fairly deliberately. Like, we don't want to go too far away from Eva, but we can't let her get too close either. Um, if she gets too far away from us, she just kind of goes to hide somewhere. It's like, snake, where are you? And if she gets too close, she just stops moving. So we have to beckon her again. And uh, we don't want either of those two things to happen. So we'll keep a steady distance, but not too far, not too close. This is, uh, is kind of like what walking around GDQ with Fizz is like. <laughs> every, every 30 seconds or so, he stops and sees something shiny, and you got to. Come on. So, no, no, get, no, no, this way, this way. Right here, yeah, there you go. Get into some CQC practice. <laughs> Oh, well, I need it for the boss later on. Mm -hmm. so. Come on, Eva, for God's sake. And just like the other times where they've introduced a new mechanic, we had one or two rooms to practice without any enemies, and now for the real thing. <laughs> now we have to really be careful. So I'm going to quick headshot. That's 10, I think, at this point. Um, we're moving along here. We're going to shoot this guy so he doesn't see us. We're gonna stalk here because he can hear us. He has ears that work, unlike the rest of these guys. Are you sure? Once he's out of my, oh, I'm sure. Once he, I've made that mistake before. <laughs> Once he's uh, out of our sight, out of the sight of the camera, we can start running again. Um, and we're just stalking here because. Yeah. Again, our movement here is synced to their their cycles. Um, 
and we're going to do a couple of sounds uh, coming up to make sure they're looking in the direction we want them to. We got a Karo Tan right here. Hey. Ribbit, ribbit. And that's not even, that, that's, that's a strat, it's not even a meme. Yeah, that'll make sure that when they come around the other side of this rock outcropping, they're not looking at us. Yeah. So we shoot that guy first, because he just kind of gets up a bit confused. But if we go that side to that side, um, he gets like scared and runs and hides behind the tree. I'm surprised she hasn't stopped and shot everybody yet. <laughs> so once she touches the grass, we can drop down. Because if we drop down too early, she's like, Snake, where are you? It's like, and then you have to go all the way back around to get her. So we'll beckon her again. Again, we'll have to stalk through the grass because there's a guy there, very well camouflaged. Like, he's probably the most intelligent guard in the game, honestly. He's the only one who, like... He, who he's their version trying. of you, basically. Yeah. But thankfully, they don't, we don't have There to. is no other right you. There's, you can't. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, I guess it's like a lowland Raichu. Yeah, me too. Hurry up. I mean, Raichu is like a Pokemon, right? So. There's, diff There's like different, different evolutions different and stuff, you come know? On. So, for the boss surfing one coming up, we're going to loop her. Sure. Yep. Which means I'm going to be quiet yes, because. This is very precise. We're listening for an audio cue uh, so we can Let's CQC see counter. So, what I need to do is shoot her twice with the Moe's and the gun. Throw her to the ground. Yes, you would. You, you don't want to approach her from the front, or else. Get her stun grenade right. in the air. She's gonna stand up. She's gonna be blinded. We need to wait a second. We don't want to get her eye frames. Shot her in the arm. That's fine. Yeah, eye frames are pretty stun grenade. intense for this. Oh, okay. Calm down, Snake. That's a little, a little overbearing. It's a bit much. So we'll quickly cast her while she's on the ground. We need to get her to a bar of stamina. Um, so she'll chase us. Oh, damn it. Oh, she did not like any of what you just did. No, it's the RPG, honestly. Oh, my. I mean, that's fine. Better. We'll just hide behind the tree and she'll run away again. She is not happy. So we need her to hide on us. Oh, there she is. There she goes. When she's ready, she'll charge us again. Yeah. Let's see what you're made of. Bruh. Hey, whatever. Did you just fall on a ration? No, I happened to have a okay. life medicine equipped. I was like, I'm not sure if you fell on one or if you activated one. Come on, boss. You're wasting my time now, and you're making me look stupid. Here so I'm going to go... Shh, shh, shh. One second. There we go. There it is. Again. You're and we'll just shoot her once more, That'll because do I hit her in the arm. And uh, Karatan for luck. There he is. Hey. Got him. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I love that. We're just going to let that echo to, to close it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're not finished yet. We still have gameplay to do. We still have gameplay to do. This cutscene, I can't make it go faster, so. We'll just all be very sad for the boss together. And I guess if there's a donation, that would be a pretty nice time to do it as well. Yeah, definitely. We have $50 from No Name, who says, like Greetings to, to you all from Ireland. Congrats on the okay. event and a really great MGS3 run. It's, only it's okay, buddy. It had to happen this way. It's an F in the chat, boys. Oh, yeah, no, big <laughs> F's in the chat for the boss. You know, you were told about this day. So this is obviously a very sad moment. I have seen it so many times, I don't care anymore. <laughs> this is so sad. Can we get some donations? We need some, we need our, our spirits lifted a bit here. Go ahead. Should we, should we lift our spirits with a, with another honk? We have $100 from a chain RXN who says, honk. Honk. That'll lift our spirits. <laughs> We have ten dollars from Buddha Sandwich, who says, "Honks are this decade's vuvuzelas, but twice as deafening." Don't at me. We are coming pretty close to calling time, um, so whoever's handling that wants to get ready. About 
less than a minute at this point. So we grab the uh, left revolver because it's the one with the bullet in it. Ocelot, Ocelot shoots a lot slower than we do, so Easy. we want the one with the bullet because the first to fire a shot, uh, wind rushing the left, obviously, and therefore the cutscene ends. Boy, is that what I've been doing wrong? Yeah. Mm. So we have a couple of cutscenes to skip, then we'll call time in about two seconds, as soon as I can skip them as fast as possible. Once I hear the music. And that's time. Time. There we go. And now for that incentive. Yes, so. Yeah, we're going to get a prep for you here, right? If you yeah. uh, have some shout outs you wanted to do. Yeah, so obviously, the first person I have to shout out would be Mrs. Right, too, who's watching at home. Um, all the way back in Ireland. Uh, obviously, MGSR, the uh, community, the Metal Gear speedrunners. Um, who have helped me for the last like two and a half years. Um, we have a website if you want to find out and want to get involved with Metal Gear Speedrunner in this game or any other game, it's MetalGearSpeedrunners.com. Hey. We have our wiki, our Discord, everything's there. Um, I'm right to MGS, you can find me on Twi Twitter, Twitch, whatever else. Well, only those two actually don't, you can look for me elsewhere, I won't be there. <laughs> um, but of course, you were all very generous and donated ten thousand dollars to hear sue me and then mgs3 so. so whenever she's ready she's gonna come up and i'm gonna go really quiet and let her perform maybe Another 10,000 for our working microphone for the song, so we'll start donating <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, just 10,000 for the, you know, to, for her to come up, and now another 10,000. <laughs> Wait, we did get, we, we did get quite true. a lot. The, the Yeti covered us, though. Yeah. I think they want to shut off the game audio for Sumi, I think, but they know what they're doing better than I do. I thought we were just doing buffer strats. I guess if you want to read her, exactly, yeah. I guess if Geek wants to read her donation. Oh, there we go. Oh. There she is. Well, I can hear you now. Can I hear you? Oh my gosh, I can hear myself. Thank you so much to the tech team because Raichu actually came up and asked me yesterday if I would do this, and I haven't done this for I haven't sang the song in about two years. Um, so they're actually because. Um, he asked yesterday, we're actually going to do a sound check while I'm singing the song. So if you see me doing like hand motions, it's because uh, they're going to be adjusting the audio on the fly. So thank you very much for donating. Thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much, Raichu, for a fantastic run. So let's get started with some Snake Eater. What a thrill With darkness and silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'm melting to you What a fear in my heart But you're so supreme In my Yeah. 
Everybody. Oh wow. my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Thank you again, Raishu, for a fantastic run. All right, guys, we're going to throw it over to the host. Thank you so much for that awesome rendition of Snake Eater. And thank you, Raichu MGS, for that awesome run. We're just gonna play a very quick Twitch ad, and then we'll be right back and read some donations. All right, welcome back to AGDQ 2020. I'm gonna read a couple of donations while we get set up for the next round of interviews and the next run, which we do have an incentive for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Some vid wars to choose the, the file name. Currently, Banjo is winning with 2,335. And Honk is just behind. If you would like to see the file name of your choice, then please donate towards the name. All right, we're just gonna run a very quick ad, and then we'll be right back.
welcome everyone that has just joined. This is AGDQ 2020. I'm going to read a couple of donations while we get uh, set up for the interview. We have $500 from 19 Day, who says, Banjo, when? We have $20 from Karunamon, who says, had to donate during Awesome Songs Done Quick 2020. That Snake Eater performance was nothing short of beautiful, and I completely agree. We have $25 from HMSLF2, who says, I don't usually metal with puns because they really grind my gears, but some have been solid during this run. All right, and I believe we are now ready for the interview. Sirs, take it away. What's up, AGDQ 2020? It's Keezer on here. Yeah, hey, yeah, crowd, come on. Yeah. It's Keezer on here, and I'm here with both Foody Biscuit and Goof. How are you two doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. Pretty great. Yeah, I'm super excited for this run in general. So we got Cadence of Hyrule coming up in a little bit, obviously. And my personal experience is I'm awful at it. <laughs> but um, this is a little bit of a sidetrack here. This is your first GDQ experience so far. Yes. Yeah, how do you like it so far? It's awesome. Yeah, you're pretty excited to do a run, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And then you're, like, at this point in time, a seasoned veteran of this. You've been doing runs with us for a while. You actually did Cadence of Hyrule at GDQ Express. So what should we expect different this time around compared to what we saw at GDQ X? Um, okay, so at GDQ X, uh, we, uh, it was the Eve's double time run, which is like pretty close to the hardest possible category in the game. So there's a lot of uh, safety play, because uh, Eve's only has one heart, and you can't upgrade that. So with one heart container, a lot of stuff just kills you in one hit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, you got to you know, play within those limitations, uh, play with certain safety in mind. But um, in, this mo uh, in this run, we're going to be running story mode, which is... Um, we, which is, uh, you know, we're going to be playing a Zelda most of the time. We, we get lots of extra heart containers, which means we can play super aggressively, go for a lot more dangerous of, uh, of strats, of pushes. Uh, it's going to result in a much faster run. Uh, um, and also, you know, thanks to all the donations you guys put in, uh, we are going to be running it on double time. So, uh, you know, twice the speed, twice the fun, twice the deaths, possibly. But, uh... <laughs> and then uh, you and I were talking about this before the interview, so... You were actually super interested in speedrunning before you caught a GDQ, but then you actually watched one of Spoody's runs at GDQ, and that kind of like picked up interest. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I, got, um, I started playing Necrodancer around August of 2015, and um, I did a few speedruns here and there. Uh, it was, but it was um, AGDQ 2016 when I watched Spoody Biscuits Coda All Zones run, where I was like, I really wanted to, you know, keep pursuing that because it was very fun, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to get really good at it. So. And now here you are sharing the stage with Spoody. It's going to be a super exciting run, guys. Be sure to check it out. Let's go ahead and switch off to some social media, huh? So let's start with at Old Iron Eyes. What are the biggest differences between Cadence of Hyrule and Crypt of the Necrodancer? Um, well, the, the main primary difference in Cadence of Hyrule uh, compared to Necrodancer is that you have this open world layout um, where you kind of got to find the dungeons and do them in whatever order you want. Um, and uh, there's a lot of exploration, um, whereas uh, Necrodancer was a very linear experience. There's also um, like a narrow, narrow item pool, um, so you can kind of um, you can kind of guess what items you're looking for and what items you can expect to find in most runs. Um, so yeah, it's mostly it comes down to the overworld exploration. Um, there's also boss fights uh, are quite a bit are designed quite a bit differently. Um, Necrodancer, a lot of it is just you kind of go in with a preset strat and you do the same set of movements every time. But uh, in Cadence of Hyrule, the bosses all have a lot of randomness to them. Lo requires a lot of on-the-fly reactions, especially when we're running double time like we are. So uh, should make for a lot of exciting fights. Now we have, from at Dashnir, the best song in Cadence of Hyrule. I would say the best uh, overworld song would be Gerudo Desert. And then the best dungeon song would be Lost Swamp. I am uh, very partial to the future Hyrule dungeon theme myself. 
I'm a sucker for Gerudo. Like, I, that was probably my favorite part when I played it. Um, so Country Ham here, outside of tons of practice, what are some pointers or tips to a better Eves run? Um, much like uh, with Zelda, it, a lot of it comes down to remembering to push that R button. Uh, the burrow <laughs> ability gets you uh, out of a lot of sticky situations. And um, it might, you might be a little averse to doing it because it feels like you're just doing nothing while you're burrowed. But it can keep you alive in situations where you wouldn't otherwise. Other than that, it's just a matter of getting used to um, fighting every enemy type on close range on minimum damage. Um, and also, uh, just uh, making sure you collect those safety items, those damage up items, to make things uh, as smooth as possible so you don't get swarmed. Mm -hmm. well, it's a couple more social media questions, and then we're going to do a little bit of a plug-in for the community. So we're going to skip down to at SinSpitterX. So with the seed for this run being an incentive and you know, therefore randomized, how do you prepare for a race like this? Hmm. With the seed? Well, um, I mean, it basically just comes down to practice. Yeah, just practice. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, um, you, just, you just play a lot, and um, you kind of get used to the kinds of curveballs the game can throw at you, and it oftentimes finds new ones. But uh, with I enough preparation, some like logic behind what's going on to yeah, there are there are some consistent yeah. rule sets to the overall world generation. Just gotta practice, so. don't die. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's probably the most helpful thing you could do. And then don't get hit, don't die. Yeah. And then this is from at cheesiest potato. When will bench become plot relevant? Next update. We're hoping so. Next update. <laughs> Next update. <laughs> now you were telling me before the interview that there's a bit of a tournament that's being planned for Cadence of Hyrule. Would you like to plug that in real quick? Um, yeah, Condor is uh, about to, which is, uh, stands for Crypt of the Necrodancer Online Racing League. Um, and they also run something called Kahoot, which is, uh, well, I'm trying to remember what it stands for. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule, I think. Uh, um, like, um, open. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an acronym. Uh, it stands for something. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but um, it's, that's the Canes of Hyrule equivalent. Uh, they're going to be starting up a major tournament, a uh, major season, season nine, uh, for both Necrodancer and Cadence of Hyrule. Um, it's an all skill levels welcome. We've had people who literally beat Necrodancer one time uh, and then jump right in to the tournament, just sign up, and uh, there's like different skill divisions and stuff, so, um, you know, it, it accommodates that. Um, if uh, these kinds of games look like uh, something you'd like to try speedrunning, try uh, racing, it's a great opportunity to jump in on that. Well, awesome. Thank you guys very much for giving up your time to talk to me of all people. I'm so sorry. And um, I believe Scent is making something right now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, you'll eventually hear me, uh, maybe, or maybe. But, uh, you know, I, I am actually making something real quick. Uh, you know, I, I figured to make some tea while I told you guys about one of the bonus games we have coming up here. We actually have bonus game three coming up shortly on the schedule, which is Animorphs run by a certain, uh, certain interviewer here, Kizaron. Uh. Um, so, you know, we're about $45,000 or so of making that a reality. But if you guys just want to make this guy's life absolutely miserable tonight, I, I highly recommend putting some money towards that incentive happening. We'll just set that down here for a minute, and we'll get back to it in a second. So we do have a bunch of absolutely amazing prizes to talk about uh, open from now until the end of uh, Mega Man, the 4 to 6 relay. Super excited for that. Uh, 5 is my personal favorite. Loved it playing it. Loved playing it as a kid, but uh, hey, you know, whatever you're into. Now, first off here, if this worked, eh, it, it, it didn't work. OK, we'll come back to it. Don't worry about it. Uh, we have some beautiful cadence of Hyrule Perlers uh, sent to us from Nick Franklin. Um, you know, you have Cadence here, of course, as well as, uh, yep, Cadence. $10 minimum donation. It's Cadence. She's good. Good character. I think she's good in the speedrun. I don't know. I've never done the speedrun. They're shaking their head no, so I will assume she's terrible. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we have uh, some lovely prints uh, from our good friend Studio Pen Pen. We have uh, a Mega Man 2 title screen print that I will figure out the correct uh, direction for eventually. Uh, w w one of these. One of these is probably, there we go. We'll settle on that one. The crowd loves it. $10 minimum donation. We also have a, a Wiley's Castle print from, I believe, Mega Man 3. Uh, super cool prints. Both of them are $10. They're individual prizes, but a single $10 donation will get you entered for both of them. Uh, now, from our good friend Joey Phillips, we have a set of Legend of Zelda-themed uh, wood-burned coasters. You got a Triforce, which is, hey, something I actually can do. We have uh, this Majora's Mask, which, 
again, I, one of these directions is up for it. There we go. Figured it out eventually. We got the Hylian Crest, which is now behind Majora's Mask. Don't worry about it. And of course, we have the, uh, the Sheikah emblem. Got it right the first time. Got one of them. That's a, uh, I believe, a $10 minimum donation for all four of them. You get the wonderful set together. Super cool. Uh, now, over on the main set, we have an amazing Cadence of Hive Rule Triforce cross stitch sent to us by Violet Valhalla. That is super nice. Excellent cross-stitch work there. It's a $20 minimum donation, guys. Make sure to get those donations in. You want that cross-stitch. I want that cross-stitch. I'm not allowed to have that cross-stitch, but you guys certainly are. So $20 minimum donation. Hey, going back to it now, I think this finally works. So for a $10 minimum donation, you can get this absolutely beautiful Legend of Zelda Korok uh, revealing mug. It reveals itself uh, when you have enough hot water in there. The water I added was not very hot. But you know what? Oh. Nope. <laughs> Nope, that's just raw tea. <laughs> Not bad, though. Uh, anyway, guys, we've got a couple of other super great prizes to talk about. We have a beautiful Triforce blanket sent to us by uh, Doug Rachel. I'm going to need to hand holding it up real quick as Kizaron dies of laughter. It's uh, an absolutely <laughs> amazing blanket. Uh, it's a $25 minimum donation. Make sure to get in it here. We'll, we'll each take an end. And this is not the uh, way the Triforce goes, but it's super cool. I believe it is a full, like, queen-sized uh, blanket for you. Amazing. $25 minimum donation from now until the end of Mega Man Relay. Make sure to get it in. Guys, we have so many absolutely amazing prizes for you tonight. You're going to need to head over to gamesdonequick.com. Check out the tracker because it's got all the information you need on upcoming speedruns, prizes, and incentives. You can put those donations towards, like the amazing Animorphs run by Keysron. But for now, let's go back to the front and let's get hype as we get ready for the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time with ZFG. <laughs> All right, well, thank you to Scent and Keys for that lovely tea tasting and interview time. That was great, guys. I'm sorry that didn't taste very good, but the mug was very cute. Hey, everyone, it's Kung Fu Fruit Gut back here. Very, very excited for ZFG's run coming up. I know we just talked a moment ago, but while we are waiting for that to be all ready, let's get a few donations in. Speaking of Animorphs, we have a $25 donation from Cat Black and White who says, honk, honk, AGDQ. Oh! <laughs> I had to donate for Keyzeron to run Animorphs because I love hot garbage, and I love supporting any and all awful or secretly awesome games. Shh. The guy next to me on the bus this morning was watching GDQ, and we got into a conversation about how great the community behind this lovely event is. Thanks for being so inclusive, warm, and one of the things that makes me feel proud to call myself a gamer. XOXO. We also have a $15 donation from Scotty167, who says, just want to say that if you haven't seen the Animorphs 125% run, you're missing a treat. Big shout out to Keys. Wow, that was being nice to Keys. My goodness. <laughs> Seriously, though, get those donations in. But for now, it looks like we are ready to start this 100% no source requirement run with ZFG. Take it away, ZFG. Good luck. 